Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today we're going to be going over the basics of neck strengthening exercises. So keep in mind that there are six basic motions or movements to strengthen the neck. They are side tilting, rotation, retraction or pulling the head back on top of the neck, flexion where we emphasize flexion of the upper neck, not the lower neck, shoulder blade elevation, making sure we're not rounding, which is the typical mistake with most people doing shrugs in the gym, and shoulder blade depression or pushing down. Those six are going to strengthen our musculature to help stabilize the neck and prevent pain and injury. If we do not know what our unique posture and body alignment issues are and we attempt any of these exercises, most of the time we're going to be strengthening dysfunction and it's going to lead to more pain and injury. We all have a tendency to have a favorite shoulder to round, a favorite shoulder blade to elevate, a favorite side to lean our head to or rotate to. And unless you know what that is, in, you will not be able to incorporate the corrections into these six basic exercises and you'll just be strengthening your pattern of moving to that side of asymmetry which is going to contribute to dysfunction. So before you attempt these exercises you have to understand what your unique posture and body issues are. We want to strengthen unique function, proper function, not unique dysfunction. So go to the Pain Free and Fit or the Posture Size websites where we have a free body analysis you can learn what your unique mechanical issues are of the shoulder blade and neck because the muscles we're going to be strengthening connect the head and neck to the shoulder blade, the shoulder blade to the spine. And it's this balance of muscular forces that you're going to need for proper strengthening purposes. From an elementary level, some of the basic exercises to strengthen the neck have to do with gravity. So, before we put the stress of gravity on the neck, which can be a little too great for someone who's just beginning, we're going to use a little bit of finger pressure over the first several weeks to months of strengthening to give us resistance in tilting our head, let's say, from side to side motions, pressure on the cheekbone in turning from side to side motions, pressure on the front of the head to emphasize flexion or moving the skull forward on the neck. You notice I'm not flexing the whole neck forward. I'm emphasizing upper cervical or with a neck and head meet that area flexing forward and retraction which is pulling the head back I can use my hands at the back of my skull for a little resistance that's a great way to begin strengthening those aspects of motion and we can learn how to shrug which is elevating shoulders up holding for a few seconds and then how to depress our shoulder blades by pushing our shoulder blades down on our rib cage okay without rounding again as I'm doing all of these motions, I'm thinking what my unique posture and uh, alignment issues are. If I have a tendency to round my shoulder, for instance, and I'm shrugging and doing shoulder depression work, I'm only strengthening my ability to do that while I'm rounding. So in real life, when I go to use my body, I'm going to go right back to my strength, which is rounding the shoulder. That's putting the mechanical stress up into my neck. If I have a tendency, let's say, to lean my head to the left always, and I don't keep in mind that I want that correction to be held, as I'm tilting side to side, meaning that I'm not going to emphasize the distance going into distortion, but rather emphasize a greater range of motion going away. If I do that, that's going to help me develop the normal corrective tensions of these exercises and not the typical pattern of dysfunction. So we're always keeping in mind what my corrections are. We're always avoiding forward head posture, which is so common to people as I'm performing rotation or lateral flexion. I'm avoiding the tendency to move my head forward. Otherwise, again, I'm strengthening rotation that promotes poor mechanics and having my head go forward. Once I digest and build up the reps of my strengthening program by progressively adding reps on in these simple basic exercises over the first several weeks to months, I can then move on to gravity resistance, where I'm going to be using lateral flexion on the side. Again, keeping all my unique shoulder blade and head postural corrections on. Rotation, keeping the face back into itself. I can do head retraction, laying face down off the edge of a bench by allowing my head to goose forward and then pulling up. 
Again, I'm not lifting the chest, but just pulling the head back on the neck. I can stimulate flexion of the upper cervical or neck area by performing a chin tuck and look where my head just leaves the ground a quarter of an inch and I'm trying to look at my own collarbone past my cheekbones. That's a nice tight cervical flexion strengthening, really helps with posture, avoiding that whole lower cervical tendency of the whole neck to move forward. Once I digest that for several months, I can move up to greater resistance. When I build my reps up to 100 or greater on all those basic movements, I can move into resistance bands. Now, resistance bands come in all different tensions. We have small bands that just provide a couple pounds of resistance, all the way up to cargo or powerlifting bands that can provide hundreds of pounds of resistance. Once I develop my ability to work from the light bands, I can then perform these exercises against the resistance of a band. Okay? Again, I'm thinking about my unique corrections. The more resistance builds up and the harder these exercises become, I'm going to want to go back to my old tendencies of my posture habits. Right? Forward head, rounded elevated shoulders, leaning my head more to one side. So I'm keeping all these corrections in mind as I'm strengthening with these repetitions. I can also do rotation or turning sideways using a resistance band. Again, the more this resistance builds up, the greater the resistance, the further I am in the set when I'm fatigued, the more tendency that these corrections are going to be lost, so the more focus I need to maintain these corrections. I can use head retraction using the band as well, along the back of my head, moving my head forward, moving it backwards. It's a slight motion, but very powerful when you're working against resistance. I can also use that for upper cervical flexion, where I'm tucking the head on the top of the neck. You know, I'm not moving my whole neck forward. It's just the skull, a very tight motion. Shoulder depression, I can move from a shoulder dip, where I'm at the top of a shoulder dip, keeping my elbows straight, letting my body sink down, and then elevate. Okay? Again, you notice I'm not rounding my shoulders, keeping my shoulders square, making sure I'm not having my head rotated but a neutral or actually past the point of neutral. If I have a tendency to lean my head left, I may want to develop these muscles with my head slightly to the right so I'm overcompensating and strengthening the weaker muscles on the right side that usually aren't getting that type of strength stimulus. So I always want to train either a neutral or a little bit past neutral into correction so I can strengthen the correct fascial musculature and neurological coordination of the area. So when it comes to real life, when it comes to functional movements, I'm going to go into where my new strength is, both neurologically and I'm going to have the strength throughout the muscle and the fascial system to be able to do the correct motions, correct function. Shoulder shrugging, the big mistake you'll see at the gym is everyone likes to use either a forward or a upside down U type pattern. Unfortunately, most of us have very tight traps moving our shoulder blades forward. So besides making sure your shoulder blade is back, make sure your shoulder blade is not tipped, it's not winged, it's not downward rotated. You want to have all those corrections in place based on knowing what your unique posture is. Again, go into the pain-free and fitter posture size websites. You'll learn what that is. And you'll be able to then hold your shoulder blades either in a neutral, non-rounded, or slightly retracted backwards position as you do your shrugs, holding light dumbbells at first, and eventually you can work up to holding a football bar grip, uh, Olympic bar with lots of weights on it, or heavy dumbbells, or even bands that you step on. You can step on resistance bands and hold them as you're shrugging up. Again, the other tendency with shrugging is moving the head forward. We want to keep that head back as we retract. So progressively building up from finger resistance and no resistance, just getting these particular motions down, holding your unique RPIs or reverse posture isometrics, your unique corrections of your shoulder blade and neck posture, progressively moving that into gravity and then greater resistance with bands, with dips, whether it's on a bench or eventually a full body dip, where you're on a dipping apparatus and pushing up and down or hanging even additional weights from your ankles to stretch the upper trap and strengthen the lower trap. The key with all of this is maintaining your unique posture. If you've enjoyed this video on neck strengthening and exercises, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. 
we have a lot more great exercises to improve your posture and biomechanics and help get you out of pain. If you'd like to help me share this great information with others, give me a thumbs up below, leave your questions and comments, I'll do my best to get back to you, and I hope this video helps you strengthen your neck and live the pain-free and fit lifestyle.